In today's video, I've beat every single boss in Grounded and completed the entire game only using tier 1 equipment. I previously already completed this challenge run on mild difficulty when I first started making Grounded content, but this time I'm going to be doing it on medium difficulty because I thought that mild was too easy. I'm only allowed to use tier 1 weapons and armor, but I'm allowing to use the tier 2 canteen as well as some smoothies and only tier 1 meals. Let's get into it. And just before we start the video, only 6.2 of you guys are actually subscribed, so if you guys want to hit that sub button, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, let's just start the video. We are starting this game on medium difficulty and Hoops will be our character, starting off in the kid's case. As I first awoken, I saw a red worker around kill a weevil, so that's one weevil meat for me. I also went around and got some few basic resources and food, and then found a research station where I analysed fibre, pebblets, and sprig. With them analysed, I made a pebble axe and a few pebblet spears, and then I used that pebble axe to cut down some clover leaves, which I would then use for the armour set. I then used my spear to kill some gnats, get some fuzz, and got four gnat fuzz, which I would need for the gnat bow. Then I created made a workbench and got the entire clover set, which gives me trickle region as well as a pebblet hammer. I then went ahead and killed some lawn mice with my pebblet axe and got the gold card and I only had three kills. Talk about luck. I went ahead and finished killing the lawn mites that were chewing on the wires and then decided to farm up some lawn mites to get my chopper mutation as I would use the pebble axe for my main weapon. I grabbed some thistle needles for the spiky sprig and some arrows for later on and got tier 1 of chopper while killing a bombardier beetle. What chopper does is it reduces the enemy's defense when I use an axe. Back at the crossing table I went ahead and made myself the spiky sprig, the sprig bow and a bunch of arrows. I also made some aphid slippers just so I can run around the yard quicker. I used the spiky sprig and axe combo to take out a few of the red ants. And inside the nest I got the red ant hill burgled chip as well as some brittle marble and quartzite for upgrades. I then decided to activate the spacer meaning we now have burgle unlocked and the oak lab. Over at the oak tree I set up on this stump where I would call this place my forever home and then I got some acorn shells as you might be thinking he's going for the acorn armor set. No I'm not I just want the acorn shovel. And with that acorn shovel I got some grubs for their hide and sludge for smoothies and armor pieces. I went to the broken oak lab and revived Burgle, gave him the auxiliary chip and then bought the meat shield mutation as well as the smithing station. While taking out the snap, I died to a collision bug. I'm not counting this as my first death because once again this is a game bug. I then decided to take my rage out on a wolf spider and killing him granted me 600 raw science and then I killed a second wolf spider for even more parts for their venom which I would use for venom arrows later on. I then went ahead and crafted the grub armor set and this is the only armor set I'll be using and continuing to use for the entire run. I paid the larvas a quick visit as I'll need their spikes for the liquid rage smoothies to boost my damage in boss fights. I then decided I might as well make the lava blade to have three debuffs on an enemy at once, the spiky sprig bleed, the poison effect from the lava blade, and the armor reduced by my pebble axe, and this is my main combo I'll be using throughout the run. Being super strong now, I took out a few wolf spiders as well as a few bombardier beetles for their parts which I'll need for the oven. I used the sprig bow to shoot down some berries as I'll need some berry leather for the insect hammer as well as the java matic. In one of the hedge like compartments, I activated the resource analyzer which I would actually never use. I then went ahead and broke some web sacks to farm up my chopper mutation more as well as getting some more stink bug parts for the insect hammer and inside the hedge lab I got myself a free milk molar, some raw signs and all the password pieces. I also had enough resources to make the insect hammer so I crafted that bad boy up. I input the password pieces into the computer and got my first super chip and duper disc. I then finished off the hedge lab by getting the brood molar BLT. I went ahead and farmed up a bunch of milk molars and mega milk molars and upgraded those milk molars down the max active mutations and maximum health. Back to Burgle I gave him the hedge super chip I just collected then expanded my base getting a jerk rack and an oven to make some mite loaves. Now it's time to prep for the pond lab. Usually I do the pond lab last but I just decided to smash this one out of the way first. I crafted up a gill tube and went into the pond depths getting some koi fish scales for the java matic later on and then decided to do the pond lab. Activating three of the breakers to activate the pond lab hatch and inside I got a bunch of muscle sprouts for smoothies for later on as well as the second super chip and duper disc and getting the pond cutscene. After completing the lab I upgraded some of my gear just a little bit then broke some ice cap mints for mint chance to get fresh defense 3 out of 3. And after killing some more bugs with my axe, I maxed out my chopper mutation only an hour and a half into the run. I then could make a gas mask because that's technically a tier 0 and then I couldn't be stuffed to make some gastro goo so I just went to the haze and just tanked all the haze damage, getting two wheels on the haze lab door to blast open, gaining access to the haze lab. Inside the infected ladybug thought I was stuck in there with her but no, she was stuck in there with me and I took her out very quickly. And my reward was the third super chip, the last duper disc and a bunch of goodies. And then I used those goodies that I got from the haze lab to open up the black ant lab using the bomb to crack open this rock. In the Black Ant Lab, I got access to zone A and B, as well as getting tier 1 of Barbarian. It was time to fight the System Manager, and I can block these attacks because I'm just so good at the game. When I was fighting the System Manager, I thought that this challenge run was going to be way too easy once again, but oh boy was I wrong. You guys wait till you fight the bosses. As a reward, 
I got his keycard as well as the final super chip. And then I backtracked to the sandbox to kill some ant lions to get my way into the salt mines. And then farmed up a bunch of salt as I would need salt for the mantis and the wasp queen boss fight as they are both weak to it. I used the assistant manager keycard to go into the sandbox lab outpost and collected the burgle chip inside. And then I took out some ant lions for their parts as I was using their parts for repair glue. I went ahead and farmed up some charcoal chunks for the ovens as I will need the ovens to make the boss spawnable items. I went back to burgle and gave him back all the super chips and auxiliary chips I collected and used the super duper to duplicate my pebble axe about seven times so I can have one of each element and some spares just in case some of them break. Inside burgle shop I bought a bunch of goodies including the glue masher and the oven as well as getting some extra resources and the zipper from this one compartment. Back in the pond I used the system manager keycard to gain access to the stump lab outpost and at home I crafted one oven and then crafted up the broodmiller BLT and made some spicy globs. I also upgraded my grub armor down the sleek path so I pretty much never run out of stamina anymore. I upgraded one of my pebble axes down the spicy path level 6 and then made up some gas arrows and some venom arrows. I discovered the four leaf clover which gave me the coup de gras mutation which funny enough I never used and then I made my way into the hedge broodmiller's lair as it was time for my very first boss fight. Now I didn't know if this boss fight was going to be easy or hard but I found out the hard way as my attacks even though I had my bleed and poison on it and a reduced armor I was still doing minimal damage and whenever she summoned her spiderlings I just shoot a gas arrow on the ground just so it helps me a little bit more. Now I was already used to what the boss fight was going to be like because I killed her once and forgot to hit the record button and when I lured her I got three broodmiller chunks meaning I would need to duplicate some more for the mantis recipe which is exactly what I did. I crafted up two more broodmiller chunks wasting my raw science. I went ahead and made myself a weevil shield as it was just in case when I was fighting the black ox beetles because you can't block their rock attacks but thankfully I didn't get hit by a single one and when I was taking out the black ox beetles it was an unfair fight because I had the mum jeans mutation which was an extra help for me and after taking out two black ox beetles I was just short on enough parts to make the black ox hammer so I'll need to kill one more. I then pushed that to the side and killed some termite soldiers for the chompers for the termite axe and then made my way over to the black soldier ant little picnic table and gassed them up for their parts. And then with their parts I made the black ant shovel but then I went back to the black ant lab to get the crow feather pieces but then I realized that they nerfed the recipe for the termite axe now needing four crow feather pieces instead of two so thanks game. I then pushed the termite axe to the side and went back to the black ox beetles and got just enough parts to make the black ox hammer and then I went back home and duplicated the crow feather the pieces that I needed for the termite axe. I crafted up the termite axe, made my way back into the upper yard to get the pupa hide to make the black ox hammer. I then crafted the said black ox hammer and then used that bad boy to bust open the back of Wendell's big scab to replace the scab fuse and then get the toenails from his ashtray. I farmed some more milk molars, upgraded my max active mutations to max, more max health and healing. I then took a deep dive down to the undershed pipe where I went ahead and killed some scarabs, getting six twinkling shells from three of them. That is six twinkling shells from three out of the four, meaning I was stupidly lucky. I then went to the Undershed Lab, which means only one boss fight coming up. My favorite boss fight in the entire game, purely because of the soundtrack, The Mant. Now, this boss fight wasn't too difficult. One, because it's really easy, and two, because I had a level 8 fresh Pebblet Dagger, which just smoked him. I then free Wendled from his containment, and then picked up the Grilled Signs from his fridge. I then farmed up some Sour Lumps, as I'll need Sour Damage for Director Schmecta and the Final Defense. And inside the Stump Lab, I got the Mantis Boss Recipe, and then took out a few Wasps Nests, meaning that a Wasp Hive was now disturbed. Then in the Fire Ant Hill, I got some upgrade materials because I'll need a bunch to upgrade all my gear. Speaking of upgrades, I spawned in five milk molars to upgrade myself even more. I then went back to the super duper and duplicated a bunch of important resources that I would need for boss fights later on that I got in the upper yard. Back in Burgle Shop, I went ahead and bought the tier three upgrades for armor and weapons. I then upgraded my gear to tier three and then I didn't have enough upgrades to fully max out my gear, which would have been helpful, but oh well, I'll figure that out later. I went ahead and cooked up some salty jewels and mint jewels as well as the orchid mantis kebab to, of course, summon him. I then took a nap and got the wasp cutscene of them coming into the yard. In the morning, I upgraded my pebble dagger to level 8 salty, as well as upgrading my spiky sprig down to the level 6 sour path. Over at the Javamatic, I placed the empty and beginning cell, as well as depositing all the ingredients I would need for the Javamatic, as well as getting my tier 3 for cardio fan. Inside the storage facility, I got the smoothies that I would need for boss fights later on. And inside the boss queen's lair, I stole the boss recipe to summon her. Inside the Moldor Castle, I looted some more tier 3 upgrades, as well as get the infected Brumella boss recipe. And while I was down here, I decided I might as well take on Director Schmecter. And my plan for this was the first phase was just use Barbarian and I can block these attacks without having a shield because I'm just so good at the game. Just like look at this. Mwah. But I was using Barbarian to get as much damage as I can on him before the Orc Weaver Juniors came out which then I would switch and take off Barbarian and just focus the Orc Weaver Juniors. And that's how the entire boss fight pretty much went. I was just taking hits when it was safe and when it wasn't safe I would just hide and take out the Orc Weavers. And after killing him we got the Corporate Kickback Mutation which I would use for every single boss fight and that's really helpful. After killing Director Schmecter I then took out the Mantis because now I had the Corporate 
kickback mutation, which means I have a 5% chance every time I perfect block to get lifesteal for 30 seconds, which pretty much cancels out the entire bleed effect, which means I can melee the Mantis as much as I want. But also sometimes I just shot him with a bow, but not too much. I was just doing it just to get the bleed effect or the perfect block defect off me. Also a B came in the fight. I don't know when that guy came in here, but he helped me out a little bit. And that's pretty much how the boss fight went. He tried to run away, but my debuffs on him just killed him and the Mantis went down, meaning there was only two more boss fights left to go. And you better believe it, no rest for the Wicked. The, after I did the Mantis boss fight, it was straight into the Wasp Queen boss fight. And this time I had a shield to block those Stinger attacks, because without it, I cannot block those Stinger attacks and I don't want to take unnecessary damage. Also, granted, devs, if you're watching this video, please um patch whatever this blinding thing is. Just don't use gas arrows in the Wasp Queen boss fight right now. You will be blinded. And also, when the Wasp Queen summoned, they always take three hits before they die. So it was just relatively easy and the Wasp drones barely got the healing off. They always got the crit off. She was really easy, I guess. Like, I, it wasn't even that much of a struggle than it was the first time I did it. I don't know why I was struggling so much the first time. And I was on an easier difficulty at that too. And taking her out meant there was only one more boss left to go. And I guess you all know what boss that is. But before I did that, I went back to the pond to get some muscle sprouts and the um Trudy just kind of trapped me. I didn't die. I just actually just suffocated under the water to another bug. So I've died twice to bugs now and that's it. I went back to the super duper and duplicated about four of the level nine fresh pebble axes as well as about seven weevil shields because there was no chance I was going to be in that fight without a shield. And after cooking up the infected Brimela boss recipe, it was time. But before that, I had to plug the haze because I didn't do that before and because plugging the haze makes me grant access to the Brewmelon Slayer. Sitting in this lair with tier 1 equipment brings me back to the first time I did this on mild difficulty. And even though this is on medium mode and she has more HP and she deals more damage, she doesn't know that I've grown stronger as well. But before we get to killing her, I'm just going to show off the amount of times I died. Once was my fault for not blocking. The second time I was about to kill her on phase 3 and then I got a double whammy combo from two bombs. That was in stupidly insane. My third death was to the infected Brumal and smashed me into the side of the wall, having another collision bug. The fourth time she pretty much just cheated and just threw a bomb at me. That's not fair. The fifth time I try and perfect block her super hard combo, but of course I failed because I have no defense. And the sixth time I tried to do the exact same thing and once again folded. But now I took a break, I came back the next day and I smoked her. It was time to put my game face on with a new strategy. Phase 1 and Phase 2 were the exact same. I can confidently get to Phase 3 each time. But for Phase 3, I was now using my Weevil Shield. Instead of trying to perfect block every single attack, if I knew that I can't perfect block it, I'm going to hold my shield up and just block it. This way, 1, I don't get the healing reduced debuff if I have a shield and block it. 2, I don't need to waste smoothies because I'm just going to tank it with my stamina. And 3, I just have more smoothies when my shields break later on. And I've been fighting this infected Brumilla for 4 hours straight for four hours straight. It takes me about 30 minutes to get to phase three each time. So every time I failed, I have to do like a whole 30 minutes again. And I have to micromanage hitting her with bleed, hitting her with poison, and also hitting her with the pebble dagger, and then blocking the attacks as well. There is so much micromanagement and multitasking in this fight. It is stupidly insane. But when I was fighting her this time, I felt something different. I felt confident. I felt good. I had a bunch of smoothies, and she was less than three bars of health left. And when she was on her final health bar, she tried to pull a little sneaky on me, and she tried to mess up her attacks, which actually messed me up, and I almost died. And then she tried to heal, and I was like, no way, Jose, you're dying now meaning I'm probably the first person ever to fight the infected Brumilla using only tier 1 gear. After multiple fail attempts, after multiple times fighting this infected Brumilla, after multiple times stressing out this entire boss fight, after me shaking and sweating on my keyboard, micromanaging everything, she is dead. The hardest boss fight in Granted has been killed with tier 1 gear. And with the infected Brumilla dead, I felt good. It was time to do tradition to do the mixer to get tier 1 of Guard Dog, which I would never use, but of course, baby, it's tradition. We gotta do it. I then went up to the upper yard to do the final defense, and I had second thoughts this time, because if the infected Brumilla was hard, I think the final defense would be hard as well. So my plan was to have all the heavy hitting bugs like the Ladybirds and the Black Ox Beals down the bottom away from the mixers, so I can like take them out without even worrying about it. Then I would switch to my Barbarian and Ant Annihilator and kill the Fire Ants and Soldier Ants because they won't really do much damage to me anyway. And near the defense where the one Ladybird comes out and two Black Ox Beetles come out, I was like, I'm just going to distract these guys. I was wiggling my tail at them the entire time and I distracted them, which gave me enough time to take out the Worker Ants that were destroying the exposed Mixer Modules, but they didn't even get it down to half HP. And just like that, we completed the final defense. Picking up the Field and Beginning Cell, I then went and rammed all the way back home to the 
space arm, plunked in the field and bigney cell once more, got really pissed at Wendell and threw my spiky sprig at him, and then went home. Meaning I complete the tier 1 only challenge, and probably also meaning I'm the first person ever to complete grounded fully using only tier 1 equipment, unless like someone's friend named Eric did it before me. And just like that, that's the end of the video. I died, I think it was 6 times just to the infected Brumella, I only, I only died to the infected Brumella, no one else. And if you made it this far to the video, I would just like to thank you for watching it through all the entire way. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you made it this far, you might as well like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.